I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every Life with same. God is so good. And I'm thankful for living. We're so thankful, thankful that you're here with us and joining us on the show, Life yeah. with Gwen and Joe. Keep shining my light, living my life. Every day is the same. We see God in everything. I'm thankful for living. Together, we'd like to help you fall more in love with God. We're going to see all of our experiences, all the things that we do, and places we go, and people we hang with, and it is going to be something that helps us all focus more on God. And in the meantime, we're going to fall in love more with God, and our lives are going to be blessed. You're a thriver in dark seasons, a survivor. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. It is a beautiful day here in Tennessee, and uh, we have a party going on behind us. And it's so fun to see these children be so appreciative. I mean, thanking, thanking us for doing this, and then, you know, that they're not spoiled, and it's beautiful. Oh, no. They're very gracious and they're very humble. Uh, which is an amazing thing for kids today. Yes, and humility is what we wanted to talk about today because it's just so helpful in every way. I'll go back and tell you the story um, that when I first started understanding about idol worship and all the things that God was giving me to teach, and I was launching this, you know, just this, I didn't, I wasn't launching the ministry. People started coming to me. I. I didn't know what was going on because I, I trained to be a, a dietitian, a nutritionist, dietitian, and um, but was um, teaching the weight loss and I couldn't help but talk about my relationship with God. But I was I had already lost my weight and I didn't um, my background at that point I'd never had had um, anything to drink and didn't know how to get drugs and um, didn't have the money to over shop and I didn't I really, I didn't know really what God, what else God was wanting me to work on. So I started praying and I prayed for uh, four, four or five straight days. God, show me what it is in my heart that I really, really got to work on. You know, what is it, what else is there, you know, besides the food and other things. And so I prayed and by the fourth or fifth day, my eyes looked down at this Somebody sent me a card, and at the front of the card it said, Humility is expecting nothing from um, anyone. And then later on I went to understand in life not to even expect it from God. And so if you have that attitude, then bottom line, every day's great. I remember I told the story of the head chef at college. It was like 3,000 students, and he had to feed them. And I asked him one day, he was right. always such a chipper guy, but... He, I said, how is it that you stay so upbeat and, you know, you've got a pretty stressful job and stuff. And he just said, every day I, I get up, I say, my head chef just quit. I have several hundred kids outside the door <coughs> waiting to eat and the food's not ready. The freezers just went off and I lost all this meat. And he, he had about four or five scenarios. Then he said, when I open the doors to get to work every day, he said, then I walk in, he goes, Nothing gets me down. Nothing gets me down. So what he was practicing was no expectations. In fact, not just no expectations. He was expecting the worst every day, which then made him... Ultra appreciative right. of how good things would be. Right. Amazing. And there couldn't be a greater example of humility than Jesus Christ and how he lived his life. We all kind of try and aspire to that, being trying to be as Christ-like as possible. The, Bi the Bible t tells us to be Christ-like, but and he is our role model for that, right? So I, I'm just in awe of, of what he did, how he lived his life, all the way to the end, when he knew what his destiny was, yet he did the will of the Father. I don't know how you could ever compare anything to that as far as just uh, the When humility. we think we have it bad, let's, let's go in there. To think that you deserve something, okay, you gotta think something of yourself, right? You, you gotta have some pride, because you, you, okay, here is the son and the only son. It wasn't like there, God had 20 kids and, you know, or had 100 kids, you know, uh, whatever. He had one only son, one only son. And he's at his right-hand side. He knows 
where he's come from, where he's going, and yet his only son didn't consider equality with God, Philippians 2, something to be grasped or comprehended. He did not he didn't think of himself so so high highly that he would ever be equal to the Father. And yet he is the Son of God. And uh, so that kind of sets the stage for the, the story you wanted to read. Yeah, it's, it's out of Matthew, and it's basically talking about uh, when, when uh, Jesus knew that he'd been betrayed, and he knew that they were coming to get him. And so Matthew 26, 36, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He went away a second time and prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Mm, that's something. So he's, he's praying, God, you know, please take this from me. Please take this from me. But not my will, but yours be done. So he, he then, that didn't, it didn't get taken. So his expectations, though, is that he was preparing himself for uh, the slaughter. And he knew it was a slaughter. He knew, he knew exactly what was going to happen. But he, when he prayed it, he didn't have this expectation. And, you know, like Job, he fell down. You know, God gives, God takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After losing all of his kids, all of his income, all of his resources. And so these men, these, the men that are at the top of the game in the Bible, I mean, literally had to have been brought up with no expectations. No expectations. And so that was the card that I got. Humility is expecting nothing from anyone, and all I added was an even God, from no man, anyone, no human, but even from God. Don't expect any, don't expect anything, and we are called to be, we're called to be humble. And it, But it, when you are humble, then look what happens. God lifts you back up. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Oh. Proverbs 22, 4 talks about humility. It says, humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. So, it's a good thing. You get humility, wealth, honor, and life. Uh, hello. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> give me some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, wealth. People are honor. looking for wealth and uh, they're looking for wealth. And, and who would, have you ever been to one of those pump it up seminars and everybody said, you want to get wealthy? Then be humble. I mean, everybody would probably look at you like you're crazy, but this is what the Bible says. Right. First Peter, all of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Mm. Beautiful. Now, how does this affect your eating? It's, it's a very powerful. Do you know why you're overeating at night? It's because you expect to. So you don't know that you're doing it, but that night eating is all in expecting. And uh, you're, or somebody having trouble with drinking, you're expecting to get that drink. And that's where hunger and fullness comes in. When you go to hunger and fullness, then the next thing you know, you don't know when you're gonna be hungry, and you, you are then dependent upon God. Waiting for hunger is how you do this humility, then humility gives you wealth, honor, life, uh, God lifts you up, you give you this relationship with God. But the other thing that you get, if you keep having, if you have no expectations, you'll be able to wait for hunger. And you will not overeat at night. That's just how it works. So we just want to thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And no expectations. Humility. Wait for hunger. Thank you guys for joining us. We love y'all. We, we love y'all. We love you. Take care. We will see you next time. Thank you so time. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for living me. Yeah. What tells your favorite part about your life is when? My favorite part about <laughs> life is when. <yeah. laughs> I mean, you know. Dad is saying, give me reasons. You're a thriver. In dark seasons, a survivor. All tomorrow leaves a drive. Brother, how do you fight? I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every day is the same, and it's straight for the grave, and I'm thankful for living.
Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.